think you're probably here because you're thinking about getting a shopping cart for your website or building a website that has a shopping cart or is a shopping cart. Before you do anything, I want you to think about whether a shopping cart is actually the right solution for your business and for where you're up to in business now. There's a lot of different things people might call a shopping cart. So it's kind of a spectrum. At one end, you've got what looks like an order form. So there might be a range of options, people fill in what they want, fill in their details and they order. So think of it as like an order sheet or an order form. At the other end, you've got a full shopping cart where people look through your website, they pick the things they want, choose their options, goes to a shopping cart, fill in their details, pay, and then you complete the process of the delivery. And somewhere in the middle is what we might think of as like a catalog. And so imagine a shopping cart with no prices. So the products are all there, they're organized in categories, but instead of buying, people fill in an inquiry form. And they're kind of your, your range of options. And then, so one thing I think it's important to think about is, well, there's four things I want you to consider. But the first and most important is competition and price. It's tempting to think that price is not important because we're used to having people want to deal with us as who we are. And if, if we're walking to a store, then the person who's running that store or the salesperson has got a great opportunity to build some rapport with us, get to know what we want, and provide specific advice and an experience that makes it valuable because it's not just picking something off a shelf. I think you'll agree there's a big difference between walking into, a, say, a convenience store and there's just things on the shelves, there's one person behind the counter, you pick the things you want and off you go. Now, you're not there for the sort of sales service, you're there for the convenience. Or if you look at something like, say, a boutique clothing store, and you walk in, you're going to be greeted by the person in the store. They're probably going to get to know you a little bit. Now they might ask your name. What are your tastes and preferences? Why are you here? What can we do for you? They might offer you a cup of coffee or, you know, have a chat about how you're going. And, and create a, a, um, a relationship for that moment that you apply some value to because you feel very well looked after. And so that's that kind of boutique experience. I guess a popular example of that might be like an Apple store. You know, the staff are really interested in what you want and how they can help you and what products are gonna suit you. So please do some price discovery. Now some easy things to start with would be a Google search for your product. Now. Just because you're buying it at wholesale doesn't mean that nobody else can. Doesn't mean the wholesaler is not selling online or someone direct importing from the US or China or something like that. And if the price that you can buy it for on eBay or another website is less than you're buying at wholesale, then immediately there's gonna be a problem because it's gonna be hard to make money. And I have to say, with few exceptions, when we see a website that has a shopping cart and they try and use that to sell products which people can price shop easily and if the product is homogenous, if the, the bottle of lotion or the stapler or you know the box of biscuits is the same no matter which website you go to, well price matters. It doesn't matter if it's 10 cents, 20 cents, free delivery, whatever it is. It's very hard to get a price advantage if you're selling an off-the-shelf product. Okay, uh, and because you're, you're not there on the website as a, to sort of value add like you are in a store. So even though you might be used to being, you know, the in-person value add, that's much harder on a website. Second thing, time to manage. Now, if we build you a website that's got five or 10 pages and you know, there's homepage, there's some information, who you are, what you do, maybe there's some details about products and things like that. You don't have to update it too often. Now, it'd be great if you did, but if you don't touch it for six months, it's probably going to be fine. It's not going to go out of date too quickly. 
a shopping cart is a bit hard to do that because you've got prices changing, you've got a new range maybe coming out every so often, you might have to remove some products or you might sell out of a product and it has to come off the website. So it's not a passive kind of a website, it needs to be looked after. And that might be only half an hour, an hour a week, but someone's got to do it and if you're not going to, who are you going to delegate that to? Are they comfortable with that? Do they know they're going to be doing that work? Have they had some practice with it? Well, we can train people, but you still need that time applied to it. This other consideration, the buying process. Now, again, there's, there's a few different kinds of businesses that we see that want to set up shopping carts. A, a pure online play, which might be, you know, there's no bricks and mortar business behind it means that you haven't had the experience of selling in person or maybe at the markets or something like that. If you're already a retail shop, you're probably used to selling things in a certain way, which like I said before, is all about personality, being friendly, engaging the buyer, giving specific recommendation, it might even be customizing the product. Now, shopping cart, it's very hard to put all that on the spot ad hoc kind of sales process in there. And just as an example, let's say that the things that you sell to, to freight them, um, you might have things that like a size of a tennis ball and it can go in a post bag for five or 10 bucks. That you might have uh, bowling balls, which are too heavy for a post and have got to go by courier and cost 20 or $30 or more, maybe for a different part of Australia or the world. Now, you know, physical store, you could say to the person, oh, well, look, this is a heavy product, so you know, there's a surcharge for delivery or something like that. But the website's going to need to know all those factors so that it can calculate that price for you. And it's very hard for you to be as convincing in any kind of website as you will be in person. So if, if you know that when your people are buying from you, that Part of the reason they're buying is because of your personality and your expertise and the way that you communicate with them. Uh, you, you're going to struggle with complete sales with a shopping cart if the reason they buy from you is because of the advice they get in person. And finally, marketing. Now, there is a huge difference between promoting a localised business, let's say it's a plumber or an electrician, or an auto electrician or whatever some some type of business which has a certain geography they service okay so they they their customers come within say 20 or 30 kilometers predominantly and that's their area and to promote that business if we get optimized for that location and their service then more or less there'll be people looking for them so we know there's people who go to google and search for plumber newcastle or car mechanic Maitland, or um, auto electrician Singleton, or whatever the different keywords are. There's a demand pull that requests that business. With a shopping cart, you tend not to be localized. Uh, there's exceptions, but in general, you're building a shopping cart because you wanna be able to send things all over the country or the world or whatever. Now, the thing about that is, you're competing against all the other businesses that are doing the same thing. So let's just take, um, uh, let's say you're gonna set up a stationary suppliers website and you have got a, a news agency you run and you do a great trade, you know, the customers come in, they buy pens, pencils, whatever, and you set up a website. Immediately you're competing against, you know, um, office works or um, office products, um, I'm trying to think of some of the other brands, but um, Office Max, and there's other, you know, if you're in America, it might be competing against Amazon or eBay or whatever. So there's going to be lots of other businesses that are competing for those same services or products. And people will be price discerning. So for you to be ranked in Google on page one for um, whiteboard markers, is going to be tricky because there might be a thousand other businesses in the world selling whiteboard markers, not to mention the price competition. So your marketing can get expensive and you don't have the luxury of that 
that local demand pull that you do when you're a small service business. There's some other things that really need to be thought about, like how do you want to take payment? Um, what type of shipping are you going to use and how much is that going to cost? What is the time delay if you haven't got a product to send it out to a customer? Um, can you send it out? Does it need to be refrigerated? There are all sorts of considerations. A shopping cart is a very definite process. People want to be able to pick the product, see how much it costs, how much it's a shipping, the shipping to be reasonable, check out, pay, done. The, you really do need to think about this. If you're going to have a shopping cart, it is a much more serious commitment than just a simple website. And if this is the first time you've had a website, you, you need to think about who's going to do the work, who's going to promote it, who's going to run Facebook. If you think that your product is going to be different because of the brand, so, okay, I'm going to create a range of socks and people will come to me because my socks are XYZ brand. Well, if no one knows that brand, how much will it cost for that brand to be known? Does that mean a thousand dollars a month on Facebook ads or a full-time Facebook manager or mailbox drops or whatever it is? Brand discovery doesn't just happen by accident. So it, it's really important to think about this stuff because a shopping cart will tend to be more expensive and when you get it from Jezweb or somewhere else, um, we want your experience to be a positive one and I would rather give you a, a simpler website while you get the hang of how people interact with the products and just list a few of them maybe or list the product categories or even do an inquiry kind of cart where it's you know there's products and categories but they're not completing a sale just to get a feel for how the actual process of buying goes and whether people want to buy online so oh, keep all that in mind I don't want to like scare you off shopping carts, but they are a different thing to getting just a normal website, and I think that's important for you to consider. My name's Jeremy. We do build websites with shopping carts, and usually we use WordPress and WooCommerce. They're fantastic systems. They're easy to use. It means you can have a great website and a shopping cart. If you've got some questions, let us know.